obelisks, the towering stone structures of ancient Egypt, have always been an important symbol of their civilization. With their unique shape and ornate carvings, obelisks were used to celebrate the achievements of pharaohs and mark the boundaries of temples. However, today, there are more obelisks outside of Egypt than in their homeland. Why were these obelisks taken away from their homeland, and what do the Freemasons have to do with it? Join us as we uncover the mysteries of the Egyptian obelisks, and the secrets that have been hidden for centuries. The Egyptian obelisks were originally constructed as symbols of power and dominance for the pharaohs of Egypt. The first obelisks were built during the reign of Pharaoh Sneferu, over 4,500 years ago. These ancient structures were often adorned with hieroglyphs that told the story of the pharaoh's reign. These massive structures were often taken by conquerors as spoils of war or given as gifts to other countries. The Romans, for example, took many obelisks from Egypt, and some of them can still be seen today in Rome. However, one obelisk's journey stands out above the rest, the one that ended up in New York. An obelisk with a Masonic link. The obelisk dates to about 1450 BCE and was raised at Luxor by Thutmose III. The obelisk known as Cleopatra's Needle came to New York Central Park in 1881. It is said that the Americans were unhappy that Paris and London each had recently acquired one of their own, as did Rome, though its several obelisks arrived in the Roman era. Wanting to be seen as co-equal with the great European power, the powerful New York newspapers began agitating for an American obelisk as soon as news broke that one would leave for London in 1877. Through a series of blunders, the papers mistakenly claimed that the Khedive of Egypt, the Ottoman Viceroy, had planned to give an obelisk to America, and in March 1877 various officials decided to start a fundraising effort to bring the obelisk to America. William H. Vanderbilt contributed $100,000 and selected the site in Central Park where the monument would stand. His reasons for picking the site were obscure, but typically it is attributed to the limited locations available in Central Park, its proximity to the Metropolitan Museum, and the ease with which the obelisk could be anchored to bedrock to secure it safely. An American official in Cairo, Judge Farman, received two letters from the State Department accepting the gift of an obelisk that had never been made. Farman, however, took the opportunity to simply ask the Khedive to give America an obelisk. In May 1877, the Khedive donated the matching obelisk that once formed a pair with the one in London, to the United States, for its friendly neutrality in the struggle between France and Britain for control of Egyptian affairs. However, the Egyptians were not happy about the Khedive exporting their heritage, and protests and legal challenges prevented the monument from leaving the country until 1880. In July, it arrived in New York, and a team of 32 horses and a steam engine took 112 days to drag it to Central Park. The obelisk finally went up in 1881. When Freemasons found on the obelisk some symbols that are similar to those of the Freemasons, largely due to the Freemasons recycling older symbols and then reading them backward into history, the Masons decided that the piece deserved full Masonic honors. On October 9, 1880, the Grand Master of the Masons of New York, Jesse B. Anthony, laid the cornerstone for the obelisk, just as the Masons were asked to do at most major constructions, including the Statue of Liberty. He spoke about architecture, antiquity, and the Masonic history dating back to Egypt. He also placed a box in the cornerstone, as per tradition. 50,000 people watched as 9,000 Masons marched to the park for the ceremony. A hymn was composed and sung, praising God for sending the obelisk, which it called the ancient sign of thine own light divine, prompting conspiracy theorists to suggest a hidden meaning. The theory goes back to the Masonic view, derived from medieval texts, that obelisk symbolized the pillars of Solomon's temple, and in turn two pillars of wisdom Enoch erected to preserve knowledge before the flood, the last remnant of the old myth of the Watchers. Anti-Masonic conspiracy theorists saw something sinister and pagan in the Egyptian symbolism and themes in Masonic ceremonies. They argued that the Masons actually retained genuine Egyptian traditions across thousands of years, and that they secretly were devil worshippers who used obelisks to symbolize a part of Osiris. The Masons didn't exactly dispute most of this. In the book The Master Mason in 1921, the Mason and Christian writer John Jabez Lanny described the Egyptian belief in resurrection and added that, that first faith is our faith today. 
However, due to the influence of the solar theory of the mythology popular in the 1800s, Masons of that era mistakenly believed that Osiris was the sun, or a fertility god. Some conspiracy writers that have pointed to the article from the Freemasons repository as confirming that the Masons raised the obelisks to praise and adore the divinity of the sun, though the original article says that Thutmose III, not Masons, had that purpose in mind. There are also some theories that describe how the placement of the obelisks and their models are not done by a coincidence, but it was intentional. As you can see from the illustrations, the three obelisks nearly form a line, one that is matching the Orion belt. However, upon further investigation, the images and attempting to aligning them, the lines do not match at all. For now, we can only speculate on the Masons' true motive and involvement as there is little information. The topic of the Freemasons will be covered by a video on its own. Just remember, there is a lot of things hidden from us and the best way to protect yourself is to be educated on those topics. Be sure to protect yourself from what is hidden by checking out one of our other videos on mysterious events. Thank you for tuning in.